Filmmaking is not easy. And growing up, I remember hearing that there are no rules to filmmaking. But after some time, I realized that there's definitely a couple pointers I wish I knew when I first started off. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys some of my favorite tricks on how to enhance your solo filmmaking. That took me so many tries. I know how hard it is to film projects by yourself. And these setups were not easy. That's why big productions usually take so many people just to make a movie. But in this day and age, we have so many resources to make our indie projects look like big budget movies. Let me break it down. Step number one is framing. Before you even start to shoot, it is so important to think, what is the best way to really spice up my shot? Or what is the best way to portray the feeling that I'm trying to convey? What gives the most unique composition to tell my story? Is it something flat like Wes Anderson? Is it a low Dutch angle, a close up, POV shot, over the shoulder? or in overhead top down. There are so many unique options to accomplish a really cool looking composition. Most of the time, all you really need is just a tripod or in my case sometimes, a stack of books. Honestly, these just never seem to fail me. And if you wanna do something even more wild, then using a C-stand can really bring things up a notch and take you to places you never thought you could reach. Now tip number two is lighting. This can be super intimidating sometimes. And if you don't have any professional lights, that is totally fine. You can do so much with your everyday natural lighting. This is actually some of my favorite lighting conditions to be shooting in. Keep in mind, you can also always change the color temperatures within your camera to give you different atmospheres. Now, if you really wanna spice things up, you might actually be surprised to hear that the absence of light can actually be your best friend. Starting from the ground up and turning on lights as you go can really make a huge difference. You can do a whole lot with what you already have. Some people might also think that the more expensive your lights, the better they're gonna be, but that is totally not true. These were only like 15 bucks on Amazon. I can also control these straight from my phone. Any ambient lighting that you can use around your house to spice up your shots really make a huge difference. This is a sun lamp, literally only $20 on Amazon. Some of my other personal favorites are my Godox LC500R light tubes, averaging at about almost $240 when I first got them. This is one of my all-time favorites, the Amaran 200X. This Amaran gives me access to changing my color temperatures and intensity of the light that I want. That leads me to my next thing, color. As simple as it sounds, thinking about what colors and what textures are in your shot will make a huge difference. Planning which outfits and what props you want in your frame are just as important as having good lighting. And depending on which color items are in your shot will also depend on how your light is reflected in your frame. Now let's talk about one of my personal favorite ways to spice up my shots and that's by using movement. Now this one can be a little bit more on the challenging side, especially as a one man team but there's definitely some tools out there that make your workflow a lot cooler and a whole lot simpler. This is called a magic arm, and it's magical for a reason. It allows you to put your camera in places you wouldn't be able to without it. You can get unique movements like a nice slow pan, a slow zoom in, a boom shot, quick whip pan. You can either take your movement really, really fast or decide to keep them on screen for a while and take them really slow. Don't be afraid to experiment. Overall, movement just really helps tell the pacing of your story and allows you to get a whole lot more creative when you're actually editing them in post-production. Now, speaking about post-production, welcome to my edit cave. Now, this is where the magic happens. And by that, I literally just mean not leaving my house for almost over an entire week straight. Your editing could really make or break your film. It all comes down to the pacing, certain beats and editing, and where you decide to trim a clip. You also can't forget about the music and sound effects you decide to use. I personally like using DaVinci Resolve for all of my projects and Dehancer for most of my color grading. I also like to spend as much time as possible to make a project as good as I can before I'm ever done. After all, really good things can take a long time, and so does good editing. 